Hi friends, today is Friday, April 10th, and today is Friday, so that is our review day, and we're going to go over everything that we learned this week. We're going to start off with a story, and then we're going to go through all the letter sounds for letters A through Z, and then you guys are going to take some time to practice writing letters A through Z, both uppercase and lowercase, and then we're going to work on some patterns together, and then you guys are going to have some alone time to write numbers 0 through 25. And then we're going to read a silly ranger writ comic to end our circle time. So our story for today is I will never, not ever, eat a tomato. And can you guys point to where the author of this story is? Good job. It's right here at the very bottom. And now, can you guys point to the title of the story? Excellent. It's at the very top with all the big words. And now, do you remember which part of the book is the front of the cover? You're right. It's this part. The front of the cover always has the title and always has the author. And then the back usually has a barcode. That's a good way to remember where the back of the book is. Now, before we start this story, what do you think the story's about? It's talking about somebody who will never eat a tomato. Do you think the story's about the little girl? Or maybe the story's about the little boy? And he has a name that says Charlie on him. Let's find out. I have this little sister, Lola. She is small and very funny. Sometimes I have to keep an eye on her. Sometimes mom and dad ask me to give Lola her dinner. This is difficult because she is a very fussy eater. Lola won't eat carrots. Of course, she says carrots are for rabbits. I say, what about peas? Lola says, peas are too small and too green. One day, I played a good trick on her. Lola was sitting at the table waiting for her dinner. And she said, I do not eat peas or carrots or potatoes or mushrooms or spaghetti or eggs or sausages. I do not eat cauliflower or cabbage or baked beans or bananas or oranges. And I'm not fond of apples or rice or cheese or fish sticks. And I absolutely will never, not ever, eat a tomato. My sister hates tomatoes. And I said, that is lucky because we're not having any of those things. We are not going to eat any peas or carrots or potatoes or mushrooms or spaghetti or eggs or sausages. There will be no cauliflower or cabbage or baked beans or bananas or oranges. We don't have any apples or rice or cheese or fish sticks and certainly no tomatoes. Lola looked at the table. Then why are those carrots there, Charlie? I don't ever eat carrots. And I said, oh, you think these are carrots? These are not carrots. These are orange twinklets from Jupiter. They look just like carrots to me, said Lola. But how can they be carrots, I said. Carrots don't grow on Jupiter. That's true, said Lola. Well, I might just try one. And if they're all the way from Jupiter, mmm, not bad. She said and took another bite. Then Lola saw some peas. I don't eat peas, said Lola. I said, these are not peas. Of course they're not. These are green drops from Greenland. They, may, they are made out of green and fall from the sky. But I don't eat green things, said Lola. Oh, goody, I said, I'll have your share. 
Green drops are so incredibly rare. Well, maybe I'll nibble just one or two. Oh, said Lola, quite tasty. Next, Lola saw the potato. I will not even eat potato, so don't even try. Not even mashed. Oh, this isn't mashed potato. People often think that, but no, this is cloud fluff from the pointiest peak of Mount Fuji. Oh, said Lola. In that case, a large helping for me. I love to eat cloud. Charlie, she said, this looks like fish sticks to me, and I would never eat a fish stick. I know that. These are not fish sticks. These are ocean nibbles from the supermarket under the sea. Mermaids eat them all the time. Oh, I went to that supermarket one time with Mom. Yes, I know the ones. I think I've had them before, Lola said. Gobbling, are there any more? And then she said, Charlie, will you pass me one of those? And I said, what? One of those? And Lola said, Yes, Charlie, one of those, and I couldn't believe my eyes, because guess what she was pointing at? The tomatoes. And I said, are you sure? Really? One of these? And she said, yes, of course, moon squirters are my favorite. You didn't think they were tomatoes, did you, Charlie? The end. So what did we learn from this story today? We learned that Lola, this little girl, was a super picky eater. And there were so many things that she did not like to try, especially tomatoes. But through the story, we learned that she tried some new foods. And did she love all the foods in the end? Yeah, she loved the foods and th she thought they were so good. So next time you're eating lunch or dinner and you see a food you may not like, take a little bite because you may like it. All right. Next, let's work on our letter sounds. Hold on one second. Alright, so our first letter is the letter A, and A makes the ah, ah, ah sound for apple. And can you guys think of another word on your own that begins with A and makes the ah, ah, ah sound? Maybe it's alligator, or aardvark, or apricot. And then our next letter is B for bear. And B makes the b b b sound. And what are some other words that start with B? Good job. You could have ball or bounce or blueberries. And our next letter is the letter C for cat. And C makes a k k k sound like cat or for carrot or for cucumber. 
Our next letter is the letter D for duck. And D makes that duh, duh, duh sound for duck. Another word that starts with D could be donuts or dog. Next is the letter E, and E makes the I, I, I sound for elephant. Can you guys think of any E words? Like eat or Edna? And then there's the letter F. F is for fish, and F makes the F. Fuss sound, like for fish sticks or french fries. And then we have the letter G, and G makes a g, g, g sound for goose, or it could be for grapes or gate. And our next letter is H, and H makes the ha, ha, ha sound for horse or for hat, or for house. And the next letter is letter I for iguana, and I makes the I, I, I sound, like for ice cream and igloo. And our next letter is J for jumping, and J makes the J, J, J sound, like jellyfish or jam. And next is a kangaroo. And K makes the k, k, k sound like kite or kitten. And our next letter is letter L for lion that makes the l, l, l sound like lollipop or lizard. And our next letter is an M, 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 m for mouse or mommy or monster. And our next letter is the letter M. N for noodle that makes the n, n, n sound as in number or nine. And our next letter is the letter O for octopus. And O makes the ah, ah, ah sound like for otter or outfit. And our next letter is the letter P for pig. And P makes a p, p, p sound, like for piper or for pickle. And our next letter is the letter Q for queen. And Q makes the qua, qua, qua sound, like for quilt or for quiet. Next is the letter R, and R makes the r, r, r sound for rooster, or for racket, or for racing. Next is the letter S, and S makes the s sound, like for seal, or snake, or slither. And our next letter is the letter T, and it makes a t, t, t sound for tiger, or touch, or tickle. And next is the letter U for umbrella, and U makes the uh, uh, uh sound for up, or unicorn. Next is the letter V for volcano, and V makes the v, v, v sound for vulture or for vroom, like what a car does when it zooms off. And our next letter is letter W 
for worm. And W makes the wah, wah, wah sound. And the, another word that starts with W is wagon or watch. Next is the letter X. And X makes the X, X sound. And X is for x-ray or xylophone, which is tricky because it doesn't make the X sound. And then next we have a yo-yo. And yo-yo starts with the letter Y. That makes the ya, ya, ya sound. Like for yak or for yogurt. And then our last letter is the letter Z that starts with that makes the z sound. Like zebra or zoo or Zelda. You guys did a great job helping me sound out all our letters today. Next, let's work on some patterns. So we're going to continue like yesterday with our AB patterns and then do some AABB patterns. So let's make our colors today purple and green. And then I'll add one more purple to help us get started on this pattern. So our pattern is purple, green, purple. And what do you think comes next in our pattern? Good job. It's the color green. And we'll connect it right there. So let's say our pattern together. We have purple, green, purple, green. And then the next is the color purple. So now our pattern reads purple, green, purple, green, purple, and then what's next? You're right, it's the color green. Okay, now I'm going to point and I want you guys to say the color. And then what's after our green? You're right, it's the color purple again. All right, so now we have purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, purple, and then the color green again. Awesome job. All right, you guys take a turn and you say the colors. And then what's after green? Good job, it's purple again. All right, let's add one more color on this. So we have purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, purple, green. Good job. And there is our ABA pattern because we just chose two colors to work with. And now our next pattern will have two of each color. So we'll do two blacks and we'll do two oranges. So if we have two, that means it's an A, A, B, B pattern. So we have black, black, orange, orange. So what do you think comes after this last orange? Good job, you're right, it's the color black. And now, if it gets a little confusing, you go back to your first black and you can see what comes after it. You're right, it's another black because there are two blacks in an AABB pattern. So let's add another black onto this one. So now we have black, black, orange, orange, black, black, and then orange, you're right. All right, now I want you guys to take a turn saying it. Ready? You're right, it's another orange. 
Good job, everybody. All right, try again. Ready, set, go. Yep, it's another black. Awesome job. All right, let's do the last one together. Black, black, orange, orange, black, black, orange, orange, black. And then what is it? It's another black. And there is your pattern. And now I want you guys to take a minute to pause the video. And I want you to use markers or crowns or color pencils. And first, I want you to make your two favorite colors to make an AB pattern. So remember, with an AB pattern, it's just green, purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, purple. Or you could choose any color you like. You could choose red or orange or yellow. But remember, how many colors do we need for this pattern? You're right, you need two. So pick out your two favorite colors. And I want you to make your own AB pattern. And then once you do that, I want you to pick two more different colors. And I want you to make an AABBAA pattern just like this one. And if you need help, you can pause the video to look at the colors that I chose and see how many I have. Okay? Good job. All right. Once you have finished your patterns, we're going to do some writing. So I want you guys to go and grab a marker or a pencil or a color pencil or a crown. You can choose whichever one you want. And you are going to do both your uppercase and your lowercase letters. And while you're doing that, I'm going to write my letters on my whiteboard so we can check them and compare them to each other to make sure we both did our letters right, okay? All right, I finished writing my letters. And once you guys are done, you can pause this video so you can check your letters too and see if they're correct. And if they're not correct, if you used a pencil, you can erase it. Or if you used a marker or crown, just cross it out and write the correct letter. So here you go. And why don't you take a look at all the letters and see if they match just like Miss Candace's letters. And I bet you guys did a great job writing your letters. All right, next, after our letters, we are going to practice our numbers 0 through 25 because when we last left school, we left off on the le number 15, and now we've made it all the way to 25. So I want to check your guys' handwriting. So we'll do just like our numbers, and you guys can pause the video, or you can work alongside me. I'm going to write numbers 0 through 25, and then we can check it with each other and make sure we did our numbers the right way.
All right, I just finished my numbers. I hope you guys are finishing up too and know you're doing an awesome job on your numbers and hopefully taking your time so it looks really nice. All right, these are all of my numbers, zero through 25. And you guys can pause the video and you can check your numbers. And just like with your letters, if you missed a number or maybe it doesn't look exactly like mine, you can erase it and try again and do your best. Okay? All right. Now that everyone has done all their learning, I thought it would be fun to read a special comic from the Ranger Rick magazine. And comics, they look like this. They don't look a lot like stories, but they have little bubbles that show where the people or the animals are talking. So I'm going to hold it like this so I can read, and then I'll show you the picture as we go. So this one is called Ranger Rick in the Mystery Experience. So if you look at this picture, where do you think they are? They may be at a pond or maybe a lake or a river. So let's find out and see. It says, Ranger Rick, Scarlet, and Boomer are in a crawfish pond in Louisiana. Ranger said, this looks like the pond. But where are Willa and Wyatt, Whooping Crane? Pess, it's me, Willa. And this is Wyatt. Why are they sneaking around? Something's up with our eggs and we're not sure who we can trust. There, that egg's just not right. Hmm, you guys see the egg right here? It looks like it has a little crack in it. The other day, people came with brooms and shooed us off our nest. After that, we noticed that the egg looks different. What's up with that? Willa, Wyatt, my investigative powers will get to the bottom of this. I think I found where we should look next. It's in New Orleans. That's not far. Let's go. <clears throat> and says later on, these whooping eggs are coming along. Just before the chicks hatch, we'll return the eggs to their nest and take back the fake ones. Uh-oh. So, what did we just find out about these eggs in their nest that look so silly? You're right. These scientists, I think they're scientists. Well, say the, the species survival guide. So maybe they're doing an experiment with the eggs, but they tricked the birds and gave them fake eggs and took the real ones. But the pelicans were too smart and figured it out. Let's see what happens. Great. Putting lots of healthy eggs in the nest may, may mean more whooper chicks. About half of all chicks don't survive, but this process is increasing their survival. Can you believe whoopers are nearly wiped out 80 years ago? They were still very rare, but thanks to our program and others, whoopers are making a comeback. I cannot wait until data from the fake eggs can help us do a better job. Did you hear that? There are people part of the program to help the whoopers. But what are the fake eggs all about? It says here, the fake eggs have sensors in them that record information about temperature and other things. The info may help scientists learn why some chicks die in the egg and others hatch. The fake eggs sound like spy eggs to me. Let's get back to the nest. Yes, Wilma and Wyatt will want to know how I solved the mystery. It says, back at the pond, the three friends tell Willa and Wyatt what they discovered. So you're saying we'll get our eggs back before the chicks hatch? That's great news. Mystery solved. Rick, there are other ways people can help whoopers too. Like what? Like whoopers need healthy, clean wetlands to live in. So saving these places and not polluting them would be huge. So that means if you had trash or litter, don't throw it in the pond because it would make all these animals sick. And instead, you should throw it in the trash. Also, we can't always see power lines when flying. We run into them and get zapped. People put special thingies on some of the lines and help us see the lines before it's too late. You see that? 
And that lets them know, don't come too close because you're going to get zapped. Rick, can you let our readers know about whooping cranes and what we're up against? Right away. A few weeks later, the gang returns to the pond. Willa Wyatt, how'd everything, how did everything turn out with the eggs? See for yourself. Everyone, meet Wendy and Wade. Thanks to those egg thieves, we've got two chicks. Excellent. Can you guys see the babies that were in the eggs that the scientists took to look at? And that is the end of our comic. And the end to the mystery of the cranes and the whooper eggs. That is all for our circle time today. I hope everybody has a good weekend. Hopefully the weather will be nice. And I hope to see everybody back on Monday. I hope you guys have a great time with your families. Bye-bye, everyone.